Hi, my name is Linda and I'm an alcoholic. Hi, Linda. Hi, my name is Kai and I am an overthinker. Overthinking comes in many different forms. One of them is about decisions. And ironically, it's the decisions that we've already taken. I should have made a different choice. I should have made more research before I decided. What would have happened if I asked that other girl out? It also comes in the form of trying to read minds. I wonder what he is thinking about me. And then we go on and we have all this imagination of what maybe one of our colleagues is thinking about ourselves or about our situation when in reality it's very unlikely that they are and it's even more unlikely that we exactly know what they are thinking. Overthinking also comes in the form of trying to predict the future because we try to figure out what happens next and because we are so focused on figuring that out we start to get into the cycle of thinking about it over and over again. And overthinking can also come in the form of obsessing over small details. And I'm not talking about being detail-oriented. I'm talking about questions we ask ourselves like, every time I meet my friend Chris, he's wearing a black jumper. I wonder what that is all about. Does that have anything to do with me? How do you know whether you're at risk of overthinking certain things? I would listen to my inner dialogue. Maybe often I hear myself saying, I should have done something else. What if this happened? And if what if and I should have is part of your inner dialogue, of your vocabulary, you might be at risk of overthinking. What if I bought this house? What if I clicked the like button before I exited the video? Or I should have subscribed to this channel. But in all seriousness, if you start to ruminate about those things, it can easily become a habit. Once it becomes a habit, it starts to become a loop in your head, which is very hard to break. And scientists do tell us that if we are ruminating, if we are starting to overthink our processes, then we are far more susceptible to depression and anxiety. What can we do to break the habit of excessive thinking? First of all, we have to think about what thinking is, excuse the pun. But if you break down thinking to its very basic form, you can only think about either the past or the future. It's very hard, actually impossible, to think about the present. Because if you think about something, it has to have happened in the past. Or maybe you are thinking about something that is going to happen in the future. And so the conclusion seems to be very simple. All we have to do is focus on the present moment. That sounds very simple and can be incredibly hard. Eckhart Tolle describes that in his video very fittingly. He says that our desire to overthink certain things is an intent to escape the simplicity of the present moment. How many of us say that we want to live a simple life? And how many of us really mean it? Because we think about all kinds of things that make it more complicated and focusing on the present moment is very simple, but again, it's not easy. And so we have to figure out how we better focus on the present moment. Eckhart Tolle also makes a very powerful example. He says that between now and now, you probably haven't thought about anything, right? Because your mind didn't wonder and thought, what would I say in the future or whatever I just said, you were focused on the silence between the two words on the present moment because you didn't know what was happening. So for once, the mind was calm and clear. And that is something that only comes with practice. One thing that you can do to practice this sort of mindfulness is that occasionally during the course of the day, you sit down and you just focus on your senses. You look around and see something without the need to label it. And you focus on that one subject. Maybe it is a nice flower. 
and you are not feeling the need to say the name of the flower or the color of it, but just focus on the sense of your visual ability to perceive that flower. And that keeps your mind more in the moment. Again, it is something that we have to practice. Of course, sometimes our brain is so full of all the things that we want to think about, of all the things, the list of the things that we have to do, that it becomes very difficult to focus on a present moment. And one thing that personally helped me a lot is just having a brain dump. Sometimes in the mornings I get up, I take my book out and I write down all the things that I have to do during the day or just things that come to my mind. And once they are out there on paper, my mind is a lot less susceptible to actually focus on them during the course of the day. Here's something else that you can do. You can start to rephrase your inner thoughts that you might have. Maybe you are overthinking about your job. Maybe your brain tells you, ah, I feel so stuck in my job, I really hate it. There's a problem with that because not only is that a negative thought, it's also something that doesn't instill any type of action. It's not something that you can form a plan around. But compare that with a rephrase of the sentence. What if you would say, I want to work in a job that I find very engaging. Then you can form a plan around it. You can ask yourself, what do I find engaging? And if you figured that out, you can ask what type of jobs are fitting for that purpose. And so you can start to make a plan and it takes away from this constant overthinking of, oh, I feel stuck in my job to here is what I can do. And if you struggle to rephrase something in your head, then maybe this following sentence will help you. Very short, three words only. Is this useful. See, we have so many thoughts during the day and we don't critically question them. We let them just pass through our brain without any judgment, without asking, is this actually useful for me? Yes, I feel stuck in my job, but how useful is that thought? And can I rephrase it into something that is more useful? But by simply asking ourselves, is the thought that I'm currently having useful? We also train our brain to critically question the thoughts that we are having and that prevents us from overthinking as well. Listen, I don't pretend that any of the things that I just said are quick fixes. They do need practice. The mental stress that comes from overthinking can significantly impact the quality of our life. And the solution isn't a quick fix. The solution is practicing. And I also want to say that if you went far down that rabbit hole and are overthinking everything over and over again, then maybe a 10 minute YouTube video isn't the only solution because we can seek professional help as well. What I do hope though, is that through this video, you got a few new ideas. And maybe you are not a chronic overthinker, but you only overthink occasionally. And some of those tips will help you to snap out of it. My name is Kai and I'm a recovering overthinker. And on this channel, I talk about life and business and leadership. And I'd be ecstatic to have you as part of this community when you subscribe to my channel. And if, and only if you enjoyed this type of content, then do give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. Really appreciate it. I see you in the next video.